Hey y'all, it's me at Authentic Fee, and this is a podcast on Life Lesson 94 from 140 Life Lessons I Wish I Knew at 20, aka FSB 140, which is out now on all digital platforms and brick and mortar stores. As the world starts to reopen slowly, uh, and it's summertime, Lesson 94 is all about taking a solo trip, aka flying solo. So I've got a guest today that's with me that's going to talk to us about the benefits around that, some of the challenges, especially given the new social norms and and new regulations, and things to kind of look out for. But definitely having the nerve and feeling empowered and getting out there and taking a solo trip. And with that, I'd like to introduce my guest today, Miss Janae Pitts, aka the travel vet. <laughs> She's absolutely fantastic. We met together. We met each other on Clubhouse and I fell in love with her on Clubhouse because she's really service oriented. She's all about collaborating. She's all about empowering women and helping us get out there and live our best life. And with that, Miss Janae, thank you so much for joining us. <sighs> Miss Fatima, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for asking me. I am super excited. This is my first podcast. So yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm glad that Authentic Fee Show can be your first po- podcast. That makes me so happy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're kind of uh, uh, joining us remotely, and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Okay, first things first, lesson 94 on taking a solo trip, traveling alone, especially if you're a woman or if you have kids and you wonder which markets to go into and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about uh, if you don't mind, your personal and professional background and how you kind of dove headfirst into being a travel guru, enthusiast, um, and just kind of torchbearer. Tell us all about it. So um, I am a, a military veteran. I just retired a couple of years ago, 26 years, U.S. Army a mother of four, single mother of four. And the Army always sent us best places, you know, be it uh, during wartime, deploying, or during, um, you know, humanitarian missions. So you kind, of, you kind of used to kind of go travel. Right. Exactly. Permanent changes of station, temporary duties, just different places all the time. So it was, it actually became a part of my DNA. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and relocate. And so Early on. Um, as I was getting ready to transition out, uh, prior to, you know, I was looking ahead, a girlfriend of mine who's also was in the military uh, came to me and she was like, I was literally on my way to Costa Rica and she was like, hey, you know, you I have Costa Rica. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to that. Sorry, go ahead. This is going to be my first trip. So took off a month of leave and she was like, I have something that I want to show you. And I was like, okay, I have been blowing it up because I've been so busy. And she was like, look, you're en route. You need to watch. Right. So she introduced me to an industry of travel, okay. which blew my mind because I was began to be educated on being uh, a con- not a consumer, but a insider of the industry. Okay. It was, it was different, very much different. And so I'm still in the military okay. uh, while when I began this journey. So it it was an eye opener, but that's how it all came about. And wait, I got a question. Sorry to interrupt you. I got a question. So your, your friend basically told you about Costa Rica or she just kind of showed you some information about the travel industry in terms of how to navigate and get good deals or whatnot. Exactly. She really did. I was born as a consumer. Okay. Okay. And then she, she basically me. gave you a look behind the curtain and you were like, exactly. oh, there's a whole nother world back here. Right. right. Okay. Like, hey, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I don't know, have you ever heard of having the veil across your eyes? And yeah. And then when the veil is removed, you get the veil yeah. lifted. Yeah. 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 Like, oh my so the whole industry turned to be different. And, you know, being that we, we did it on the military, you know, the military told us where to go. They did our, um, you know, logistics Everything's portion. Really scheduled, structured. Oh. So you didn't have to think about any of that. You just kind of showed up. Right. Got it. <laughs> so when she showed me this, when the veil was lifted and she was like, hey, this is something that you can do when you transition as you retire. Okay. You know, and I said, I didn't, I had never thought about it. Listen, 
See, I didn't even think about being an entrepreneur. And the reason why is because entrepreneurs work too hard for me. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you, you, you got to hustle. I can, tell, I can tell you got to oh, hustle. Right. And you got to hustle and make it look easy like a duck. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So I said, I'm just going to go ahead and clock in. And it's the Department of Defense, I call it a day. You know, get a good GS job afterwards. Man, uh, when she showed me this, though, it opened my eyes and said, man, you got options. Yeah. You have options. Yeah. And so I did not know what I knew then, which, but travel was my passion. It actually became my medicine. My medicine for my PTSD, for my depression, my anxiety, everything that I was having issues with and still having issues with currently mentally, it began to be my medicine. I didn't even realize it. So but, I got to jump in here for a second because you just touched on so many things that I got to just highlight. I think it is. So first of all, I think it is absolutely fascinating how you converted basically a professional experience that helps you kind of uncover a, a passion or an interest or kind of a gene that you have in terms of the travel bug um, into not just, okay, I'm going to figure out a way to do this full time, whether it's remote, whether it's earning income abroad, whatever, but you actually institutionalized it and made it into a business. What, what, yes, I, I think that's, so that, that for me is just, that's, that if you ask me what the definition of living your best life it's that and so and and to like the cherry on top of the sunday for me is the fact that cuz we all have struggle and you touched on mental health a lot of people ha have uh you know are, are really trying to balance out their mental health so many things and the fact that this passion and now this business uh and professional kind of escape for you was became something that helped you manage your mental health. I think that's absolutely fascinating. I think, and you just touched on some, something that we're going to talk about in just a minute, which is one of the benefits of traveling on your own, basically, or just travel in general, which is it gives you a chance to explore your interior and kind of balance yourself it, out. That's living your best life. How long have you been doing that? Literally, it has been three years. Okay. I just turned three years on May 18th. May 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, three years in, uh, I was a baby, you know, baby, baby crawling. Yeah. Learning, understanding. As, as you, as you did, you learned as you, that's, that's the entrepreneurial spirit. 100%. Started walking, now yeah. walking. And then all of a sudden COVID happened. I was like, ah! oh Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, COVID just turned everything uh, over. I mean, obviously, God rest the souls of everybody who's passed and been impacted by it and lost a family member, a friend, loved one. But it, 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 in terms of tourism, economy, transports, it just turned everything on its head. It did. And so when I was telling you it, was my, it's, it has become my medicine, one of the things, you know, some days are really bad for me. Some days I can't get out of bed. And I'm not talking one day, I had migraines, maybe a couple of days. And so being gainfully employed and having to deal with the drama and the back and forth of having to explain and getting all these medical documentation, yeah, that's not who I am, never was who I am. Like when I go, I go 110 yeah. plus. But you don't plus. want it to define you. It's one pixel of your composite it's, that you manage. Exactly. Yeah. No, I hear you yeah. loud and clear on that, Miss Janae. And, and I, I, res so I respect that. I respect yeah, that. and so when um when the entrepreneurship journey came apart, you know, it was like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I just knew I had to burn some bridges. I don't know if you ever guys ever wrote read Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, but I'm um, not, but thank you for that suggestion. One of the things in there, he talks about burning bridges. Uh, they burned the bridge because they had to go and they had to fight, and the captain burned the bridge. And the reason why he burned the bridge because he said there will you be no retreat. Yeah. <laughs> we either gonna die or <gasps> we're gonna we're gonna we're, gonna, we're <laughs> either gonna make it or we're gonna make it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I was like, oh I gotta pick up that book. That's fantastic. The, the way that it just makes your mind just totally think you ain't got no back door, you ain't got no exit. Yeah, this is it. There's no plan. It, it's plan A. Here we go. <laughs> your life depends on it. So I said, oh, yeah, I'm about to go some. So I, I can't go back. It's going to have to work. 
I respect and so that. Two years strong. I was like hitting it now. Da, 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 da. And in February of 2020, I had kicked off the no Jan- January. I was somewhere February 2020. I was in Los Cabos, okay. kicking off the year. We Mexico. just left Vegas. Mm-hmm. Mexico. Okay. okay. Just left Las Vegas. A good travel industry convention about all the great things that were going to be coming out in 2020. Yeah. You know these powerful, impactful. Yeah. Uh, so you're on a high. You're ready to like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then. Yeah, life. She's like, like, what? Baby yeah. entrepreneur. Like, this what's gonna happen? But yeah. I'm gonna tell you, um, my bills got paid in both households because I take care of my parents. Yeah. Nothing was turned off. Thank goodness. I have two children in college. Yes. And when I tell you, it has been a godsend to be able to be able to in make it, save and invest your yes. money yeah. as you're doing it even as an entrepreneur it saved me and then another thing about the entrepreneurship journey that i didn't know about is residual income and how all that works and yes yeah. my my 2019 my 2019 was a good year so my commissions were still paying in 2020 yes. and i had residual income coming in so it was like amazing to know how that worked when so, you need it to really work <laughs> it shifted, it's it's really fast okay I, I, you touched on like six lessons but i'm gonna go back i'm gonna go back to 94 but you, it's really interesting how it it made you i'm not saying that you were immature before but it just made you grow up without even realizing it in ter- not grow up but level up level, level up, up. With, mm-hmm. in, without even realizing just by doing and so i think a lot of folks I mean, I certainly was accustomed to getting a, a, basically a check from an institution, right? And so you're, 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 whether you're necessarily living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, but you're relying on an external kind of thing and, mm-hmm. and it's finite, but to shift your mindset and to make it, like you said, residual, uh, where it's just something that keep, it's a, it's a totally different game. It's a game changer totally. it, and, and it totally. makes you, it makes you play in a different way. I hear you loud. I hear you loud. It it. Wait, so I got to ask you in terms of your, your business, um, tell us the name of your business. So the name of my agency is Ultimate Sky Travel Agency. I have approximately about 70 um, travel advisors that's a part of my team yeah. uh, who in their own right, own their own agencies, right. in which I just coach and mentor and teach them how to grow and be phenomenal. Okay, so you, you basically have a consortium of travel agency and y'all, y'all kind of yep. not feed off of each other, but y'all collaborate in different ways, but you also right, mentor yeah. them. And, but you also help people find kind of those go-to spots that may not necessarily be on their radar. So I, I got to ask you about this. So when are it, not to get into the business of your clientele, but do you get a lot of single women? Cause for me, you know, when I think about traveling, cause I've, I've, I'm grateful to the good Lord. I've had an opportunity to travel to many places. There's so many places I'd like to go. Uh, and I've gone to a lot of places on my own, including living abroad and whatnot. But in terms of like coming in and out of markets that you're not necessarily accustomed to, I, I find that not to make it a gender issue, but women tend to be more hesitant for a number of different reasons to go into places on their own. And that hinders us from uh, actually ta- you know, taking the plunge and, and, and booking a trip. It's like, oh, I don't have somebody to go with me or, or oh, I have kids or they have schooling or whatever. So do you have a lot of uh, uh, single women come to you and kind of ask for advice? And wh- what do you tell them to do? And where, and where do you kind of send them? And so basically uh, I tell them based off of my own as that, hey, listen, First and foremost, you got to feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah, you gotta just amen. Be smart about it. Yeah, you just got to be you, smart about it. You just you said the right word. You got to be smart. Everybody, men, women, everybody, you got to be smart about it. You got to be smart about your movements anywhere you are. Exactly. And so even if sometimes it just takes small trips in the United States. Yeah, domestic. Hop in your car and just yeah, another, just exactly. to get, just to kind of get get your feet wet. Get yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I I say I'm a road tripper all day oh, me, long oh my god i'm a world <laughs> warrior girl me too i love it and especially with the pandemic yes. yes so i would tell a single woman to jump in her car in a heartbeat 
and find the next destination city to you and drive there. Yeah, a hundred percent. So if you're, you're basically saying that if you're if you're if you're single uh, and you're a woman and you're scared, because there are. I remember once we did a clubhouse room together a while back. Not the one that we did on front. Not the one we did Friday, but the one we did a while back. There was a woman mm-hmm. who just said that she was terrified to go anywhere by herself. And God bless her. That could that also could be you know there are other factors there, but um, I think I think that's what you told her to do. Like take a take a day trip just to kind of get used to it. Yeah, to get I, used to it. Get used yeah. to it. so like for example, there's uh, and then people don't even realize what's in their own backyard. That's that's what I found very uh, interesting because I was born and raised in Chicago, and I'm gonna tell oh you. God! Elizabeth. No, it's not called the Windy City because of the wind, but anyway, we're not going to get into politics. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Well, being there, you know, there's a lot of places I didn't even go and I was born and raised there. So yeah, I, I want to understand. a great city. Uh, Chicago is one of the most underrated cities in the, in, in the U.S., I think. It's a great city. So you, yeah. you basically, so you basically started out in your home city. You started in your own backyard, going downtown, you know. Yeah. I stand the differences, the changes, the hotels, you know, the yeah. restaurants, yeah. you know, the shops, you know, yeah. like click, click, pictures, click, click, yeah. pictures, like, Especially you Especially know. in cities like that where there's, there are parks there and there's a lot of things that are, you know, whether somebody, whatever somebody's budget is, there are a lot of things that are just open to the public. So like the beans, that's I'm, I'm mm-hmm. saying it's Chicago because I know Chicago so well and I love it so much, yes. but like the bean, the, you know, so many different things, the lakefront, uh, and then there's some really nice hotels and I, I, I hear you loud and clear on that. So I, I want to ask you, I want to go back to um, some of your own personal travel since you've, whether, you know, at this point it's personal and business, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, tell so you you touched on easing into it and domestically Mm -hmm. Um, what about abroad what if what if somebody is like you know I've got some gumption I'm I'm, I've been in quarantine for a year I'm ready to you know get the show on the road where are some spots that you that you found were just perfect for women and are family friendly or that maybe are not on people's radar Mm mm-hmm Dubai. <laughs> Girl, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. So, so, uh, so, you know, I'm biased because I'm Arab, but I'm just saying, but Dubai, I have to say, uh, and I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up. So um, the, the Gulf countries in general, uh, the, Ara- you know, Arabian Peninsula, the Gulf countries in general, there are uh, super safe, uh, more than you would find an other kind of like you can leave your purse and that kind of thing. I don't recommend that, but I'm just saying Dubai though uh, is really fascinating because it, it, a lot of it's, tr- a lot of its economy it relies heavily on tourism. Um, and so, you know, they have gone the extra mile in terms of security. I mean, you, you can live in Dubai. I would totally leave my purse sitting in a chair and go to the washroom and come back and not even think twice about it. Like not even think twice about it. And it's amazing there in Dubai is because they, the, the whole um, mindset when it comes to family. So mo- a lot of people the want whole to. mindset when it comes to, say that, say that again. When it comes to family. Yes. It's a very a lot, family yeah. friendly. Yes. Very a lot of people want to be like, oh, well, they have to, they're, they, they're, the women are submissive and all this other stuff. Listen, the women are cherished. Oh, they are like yeah, I, I think it's, you know? it's, that's just, it's, it's maybe a different culture than what people are accustomed to seeing, but absolutely not. So, I, you know, yes. the, uh, I, I think when it comes to, uh, it's funny that you bring that point up because I thought you were going to say another point about like being a, a party city. And I, w- I was actually going to say that it's, you know, Dubai is like New York. If, <laughs> and, and, and the exterior <laughs> is going to reflect the interior. So if you want wholesome fun, you're going to go down to Central Park, you know, <laughs> and, yes. and, but if you, if you want a nightclub, you can hit the strip, you know, what I'm saying? and, and uh, Dubai is the same way. It's basically what you want. Right. You're yeah. right. And so 
um, people would ask me, is Dubai a, a good place uh, to take children? In? And I say, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you want them to go on a, like safari, different things, like uh, like the ATV and stuff like that, if they're 12 and under, I wouldn't What's ATV? Oh, uh, well. uh, you know, in the desert where they take the four by four. Yeah, yeah, okay, before. yeah, okay. I'm like, no, I don't recommend that, you know, yeah. but as far as an experience, seeing the tallest building, the Biz Khalifa, seeing a, a, a hotel that looks like a, a ship that goes yeah. underneath the water, you know, going to, um, what is my favorite place? Uh, Atlantis. Um, yeah. The, the, pa- the palm is lovely in Dubai. Yeah, or is the that- palm is a family, you know? The, the palm is lovely. The palm is lovely. There's a beautiful hotel at one of the very at tips of the palm that's very inconspicuous that I always used to kind of uh, run to and, and, and kind of hide away and have afternoon tea. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful, but yeah. And a, a lot of people wouldn't kind of think of that as, as the first thing. It's funny that you mentioned Dubai because b- during the pandemic, when everybody was kind of closing off and really hesitant to, for mm-hmm. visitors to come in, um, if I'm not mistaken, Dubai was one of the, the spots that basically said, and including obviously, uh, fly emirates if i'm not mistaken it definitely was i think we talked about this in one of the clubhouse mm-hmm. rooms that if you come over uh they would provide basically health insurance on the ground if you you know god forbid if, if an individual fell ill or caught the virus and whatnot um from having been whatever on the plane or exposed in round mm-hmm. so i don't know if i don't i don't know if they're still doing that or not but i just found that to i, I just said wow you know they're really kind of committed to opening tourism back up. They are, uh, and which is why they were one amongst the first to be able to, so you could still come over and, and partake and have a great time uh, there. Yeah. And so they, I recommend them, but there's like a lot of people, I'll give you a list, like uh, a lot of people talk about the United Kingdom to take your children to uh, Portugal, Italy, Spain, uh, different European countries of that nature. Mexico is one that I would strongly uh, recommend. And okay, I would let's talk you, about Latin America, please, for a second. Because I'm mm-hmm. curious, because you, you also, when we did the Clubhouse Room, you talked about uh, Mexico, and then mm-hmm. you talked about uh, Costa Rica, which is the Caribbean, it's not Latin America, but still, I, I, I would love to hear uh, why, because I, for me, I, I would never think, uh, I w- I w- I've actually never been to Mexico, believe it or not. <laughs> I've, never been. I've, ne- I've, never been, I've never been to Mexico. That is something, I tell you, um, so I've been to Mexico uh, uh, numerous of times, mostly solo, and just this past year, uh, I started taking my child with me, my seven-year-old. Okay. Uh, COVID wrecked habit on a lot of different people. Yeah, of course. The pandemic was a blessing in disguise for me and my baby, so she can actually travel with me. Yeah. Uh, and so, in Mexico, terms of like remote schooling and whatnot, you found a way to do remote schooling. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly. So I took her to Cancun, the first go round, and um. It was great, you know, received nicely. Everyone's always saying, you got to travel by yourself because you're dumb. Yes, I am. Yeah. And, um, and But I'm going to tell you this one time we went and we rented a car and the rain came out of nowhere. Oh, and we were yeah. driving this little bitty old car and there was like water. Just Wait, like this, this is water. Mexico or, or Costa Rica? This is Mexico. Mexico, okay, okay. And so, as we were going to go through the water, the engine stalled. And so, here, here we are, oh my sitting God, in the water, like out of a movie. and the water starts coming into the car. And so, my baby now is freaking out because yeah. the water is coming back where she's at. And so, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to remain calm. I know we won't drown in this water. However, comma, the experience is still just kind of traumatizing. Crazy. Yeah. Right. And so, um... Here got these group of guys on this truck coming through. They jump off the truck. They, yeah. they don't even think twice. Off. Yeah, they don't think twice about it. Yeah. And they push us on out of the water. Yeah. We're not, no, and listen, the barrier of English and Spanish, not there, but saying thank you and seeing the relief on my child's face. Was, yeah, talking. that's universal. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it was just so heartwarming how that just happened like instantaneously. You didn't even have how to ask. They did it. Yeah. 
And so I, I, from that point on, you know, I started looking and observing how they treat me when I'm with my daughter. And it's phenomenal. They're always talking to her, yes. no matter who they're at. They're like, yeah. you know, a language barrier, but they don't, it's just like, you know, it don't matter to them. You got a boy love, grandmother talking, you know, to the, yeah. to the baby. You know? Yeah. So um, that is why my daughter, to this day, if you ask her anything or anywhere she wants to go, she'll tell you, I want to go to Mexico. I want to go back to Mexico. <laughs> it's so fun. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, but she, that's all I want to say because she loves it. She lo uh, so it's so funny. If you, so when you, when I asked you, where would you recommend for folks to go? And you said Dubai, that for me was like a no brainer because I know it's such a kid friendly, that, re that whole region is so kid friendly, so family friendly. But when you say Mexico, that, 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 when you say Mexico, that's just, that, that doesn't register as somewhere that would be super family friendly, not that it's anti-family, but mm -hmm. you know, and relatively speaking to kind of the experiences that I've had. Uh, in the Gulf, so that's really fascinating. Exactly, and so when we when we hit had to Costa Rica, which is Central America, um, this oh my is goodness, my geography is off. I thought Costa Rica was in the Caribbean. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. Costa, so Costa Rica, well, Central America. Yeah, and so it, it all it is all like um, the way that Mexico and Costa Rica set up is similar. So okay. you have towns, right, and in the town is like a park. Okay. In the, in the smaller towns, a park. Well, that's the gathering place. Yes. And so what I found is when I find a park or when I find that central gathering place, me and my baby can be people watching and everyone will come out and next thing you know, she's playing and I'm just sitting there and I'm just watching it all because it's family oriented. After the day is over, the families come. They come to the park. They hang out. Um, I don't really know what to call it, you know, whereas we get off of work, we go home, we tired. Yeah. We come out and that's fellowshipping. And this yes. can be a busy night. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 think, I, I think several different cultures abroad make fun of American culture for that. It's like you're just grinding all day and then you come home and you just sit on the couch and watch TV. Not you, but like a, yeah. a person just comes home and sits on the couch and watches TV. <laughs> <So> <laughs> It's that, it's that culture, and so that's what makes it so family oriented. That's what makes these locations so family oriented, Mexico and uh, Costa Rica, because boom, you can always find that family center. You can always find that park. You, you know that that after work, everybody's having a great time playing music. <laughs> yeah, and that's closer. Obviously, if somebody's not gonna like, you know, go. Uh, halfway around the world then that you know this is right next door so I want to okay. ask you on your on your solo trip and I think it's really ironic that that experience with the with your jeep stalling basically with your car stalling mm -hmm. actually didn't deter you but made you even more comfortable just to know that people have your back um, exactly. yeah because for me that would have been like okay that's a wrap y'all peace out <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's interesting um so what's obviously you've traveled with people before uh either whatever partners you know groups whatever it is and you've traveled on your own and you've traveled with your daughter um what has been the experience for you internally because I always say that travel helps you it's like a symmetrical exploration outside and inside what are some of the things that you got out of kind of flying solo and traveling by yourself? So one of the things flying solo is when you're, when you're by yourself, um, you have more time to experience your, your mindset shift in different things, like an internal balance where you're starting to t take note of who you are and define who you are and have that space where you can yeah. think yeah. you know clearly yes when you're on the beach for example by yourself say yourself. how yeah so when you're chilling on the beach right you have these aha moments because you're 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 simply taking it all in yes. you're just you're taking it all in you may have a good book you may not even have a book you may have your some music or whatever and so it's just your moment Yes. Your moment of clarity and, and your moment of just usa, if yes. one would say. 
Okay. But, so I don't know what that term means, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So when I find myself traveling with others, it's always so busy. You know, it's always so I can be in the same moment. Yes. On the beach. Yes. But it wouldn't go the same way if I was by it's myself. Just, it's noisy because you, you're yes. not because the other person's a bad travel companion, but right. because you're just you're engaged with somebody else. It's it's funny Obviously. that you give the uh, the example of sitting on a beach by yourself. Um, very recently on my uh, way down to Mississippi, I stopped, and right before my book drop, and I'd never done this. This was my first time to do it. Uh, I, I, I did that. I sat on the beach and I forced, I didn't force, but I invited myself to not listen to music or listen to an audible book or mm -hmm. listen to uh, a podcast uh, and just be basically all I, all I did was just kind of listen to the rhythm of the waves. Yeah. And I, and, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, but the, that moment for me brought, just created a space of s such in, immersed self-reflection. And, you know, I think sometimes people, to your point earlier about uh, mental health, I think sometimes folks can be scared to spend time by themselves because of what may surface. Um, I, well, I don't, I don't want to say that. Yeah. I don't want to project. Yeah, say but yeah, mm -hmm. I say you better say that. Say that yeah. again, because well, that was I, true. Yeah, so I don't. I, I, it's not for me to like project on other people, but I certainly, you know, just kept myself mm -hmm. busy or quote unquote relaxing with whatever. Uh, and when you get still, you can hear yourself basically. Uh, and so, right. yeah, yeah. No, I hear, and yeah. and, and you kind of you quiet down all the distractions and the noise, and that's that for me is, and even in the doing even in the doing, like with the example that you gave about getting stalled or the, sitting on a beach, you learn about yourself and you're like, oh, wow, man, I like my company. Or, oh, wow, man, my brain is actually, my mind is actually a prison. I need to clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, you just, I feel like you get a chance to kind of get to know yourself, what you like, what you don't like, mm -hmm. you know, and, instead of just kind of being on everybody else's schedule. What, was there anything that was weird for you because sometimes I know women don't like going to movies by themselves or don't like eating alone or don't like, was there anything that was like, oh, that's kind of tough? No, because I'm that woman. I'll go to the movies by myself. I'll yeah. go in there by myself. <laughs> Me too. I'm actually, when I go to the movies with people, I'm like, you need to be quiet because the show is on. I didn't even know that was a thing for people, but when it I was there, I was like, well, why? It is but, a thing. Yeah. It took me until, it took me until I was, 30 mid 30s to be, get comfortable to go to the movies by myself and now I love it now I prefer it to be honest with you but <laughs> eating out alone I always enjoyed doing it I mean was is that weird for you no I eat by myself and I yeah everything by myself but what I get a lot of is um are you here alone are you alone yeah. and I always tell people be careful how you answer that question be truly um oh that's just yeah smartness of it all yeah that's good that you brought I, my, that immediate, up. my immediate is no yeah uh, i'm not here alone uh you know just to let that be known and and yeah. the questions come well why did they let you eat by yourself oh because i got tired of them you know yeah. whatever the case may be. yes okay so miss janae you just hit the nail <laughs> on the head i mean i i wanted to we talked about the benefits of traveling alone in terms of self-reflection mm -hmm. now we got to talk about the pragmatic stuff like you know safety so one of your things was if anybody ever asks you while you're sitting, because people are going to engage with you, you know, you're a solo traveler, you're an attractive woman, people are going to be like, hey, you know, are you by yourself? And, right. it, and your response is no. <laughs> yeah. No. Very smart. In, oh, very no, smart. No. Very no, smart. No, no. Um, and another thing for, you know, recommendations always from women who are solo traveling to a different country. Find out where the embassy is. Like in Mexico City, for example, which is an awesome city, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. In that's Mexico smart. City, the embassy is right downtown. Yeah. Right downtown. Right next door to it is a Sheridan Hotel. Right across from it is a Marriott. Okay. But believe if you are having any reservations about traveling anywhere by yourself, stay near the embassy. Right. Right. That's a smart tip. 
Yes. When you see the Marines or some out there with their... Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. It gives yeah. you the whole... So you know that that's a secure area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Under, yeah. Understood. Yeah. Now, that's a yeah. smart tip. So, okay. So when pe folks ask you if you're traveling alone, you say no. And then if you're kind of like trepidatious and you're not really sure where to stay, stay near the embassy. So if you, what about in terms of like cash, passports, what do you carry on you? So I don't carry any cash and I don't carry my passport out. People, people be like, why? Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of two ways about that, to be honest with you. I'm going to recommend to you why. All right. So here's tip number one. I always keep my passport locked up in the safe. Right. First and foremost, and it doesn't come out with me. Okay. But what comes out with me is my cell phone. That smartphone is very smart, but yeah. people don't utilize it the best method that they should. Yeah, that would, those people would be me. Okay. <laughs> so there are a couple of apps that are free. Okay. Secure folder, free. Secure you can take folder. Secure folder. If okay. you just type in your app store, secure folder. Okay. Or if you type in your Google um, Play Store, secure folder, a plethora of apps will come up. And what secure folder is, is it allows you to have information inside this folder that is locked by you. It could even be hidden on your phone where no one's able to actually see it or know what it is. It okay, be, girl, you're getting into all kind of interesting, you know, I'm not going to call it spyware, but yeah, like <laughs> really interesting, yeah, technology. Okay, I didn't even know that existed. So I recommend getting one of those folders and, you know, taking a picture of your passport. Yes. Take a picture of your driver's license. Yeah, your travel um, itinerary, something. Yes, okay. All of that. Keeping that in that secure folder. So if something happens while you're out, God forbid. You can easily bring that up. Okay. And they can they can see it. Which is why I keep my hard copy in a safe place in the safe. And I take that one with me. Okay. If anybody needs to get that hard copy, they're yeah. going to let me get it or they're going to escort me and we're going to be able to go retrieve it. Yeah. But from getting out there and getting pickpocketed. Yeah, God forbid. Getting, getting it lost, you know, anything like that. Um, and then I also tell people, if you, the passport itself is your baby, but yeah. you can also get a passport card, you know, the little small one that goes with you as well you can get that a lot of people you know don't take it to go out of the country of course but to have it when you're going on excursions or going yeah to or especially whatever. now you got to also carry your vaccine card okay but we're going to get to that in just a second so okay exactly. so, so you're saying basically okay you gave some really good i just lost my volume real quick on that. oh i i can still hear you oh, okay there you go. yeah okay um, so you're mentioning some really great nuggets here. So you basically said, say no, if somebody asks you if you're traveling alone and do not carry, basically your suggestion is not to carry cash or a whole bunch of stuff on you and just to carry your cell phone with it, it that basically digitally houses a, a soft copy of all the stuff that you, that you would need, God forbid, in case of an emergency. Um, I got to tell you, so I... I'm, I'm going to, I'm, it's, I love how happy go lucky you are about travel, but you're super pragmatic about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> you're like, okay, we're going to do this the smart way. Not even the right way. We're going to do this the smart way. No, I like that. I like, cause I'm, I, I, that resonates with me. So for me, and this might be, this is, might be my Scorpio paranoia coming out, but that's okay. I'm going to let my freak flag fly. So when I go, when I go places by myself, I will not, um, I say the same thing. I don't say that I'm by myself, but I will not uh, drink an open container. I will not drink from an open container. So, yeah. and, and a lot of times I will be, so I don't drink alcohol, but a lot of times when I'm uh, eating alone, I'll go sit at the bar and just, and I wind up speak, I wind up meeting so many oh. fascinating, I, I meet like older couples who just sit and talk to me about their life story, their marriage. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but I won't take a, I will not take a drink that's open. I, I only drink things that are bought. So bottled water, bottled juice, something that I can see being opened or something that I am opening myself. And I know that that might sound weird, but I'm just super conscious of, of, of that kind of stuff. And I think when you're traveling by yourself, 
physiologically, anybody who's in a new place, your spidey senses go up, you know, you just kind of pick up your, you're picking up everything. And so I, I take it like an extra, <laughs> I take it an extra layer just to be extra careful with it, you know? And so, you know, I, I love that you said that, but I know there are some party people out there. So I'm going to give you some, guys something because you can still have a great time <laughs> yeah. and be a person. Yes. And here's how you can do it. I want you to take that hotel card that you're, oh, this, the hotel that you're staying at. Yeah. I want you to be sure to grab a card from the front desk okay. and take it with you as you're going out. When you go to your destination of wherever that may be, I want you to sit at the bar, like you just said. Yeah. Sit at the bar, make friends with the bartender. Yes. Oh, I always make friends with the bartender. They're fantastic. Yeah. Have that conversation with the bartender. Like, hey, if you see something, say something. Yeah. And when it comes to you, you know, establish that because they won't yeah. know unless you have that conversation because they'll think, you know, maybe that's something you want to do. Right. But if you have that conversation beforehand, they yeah. have, they got you. Yeah. You that's an interesting, say? that's a, so you're basically just saying engage. So even if you're flying, even if you're traveling by yourself, and I'm so glad you brought this up, even if you're traveling by yourself, it doesn't mean that you're not engaging with other people. So you're mm -hmm. actually saying take it to another layer, or take it to another level with the folks around you, including the people that are going to be like the, your primary kind of uh, folks of service. We're all in service, I believe, but folks of service and just basically say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for this. So that's I've right. never I've never done that because it helps you. Um, it helps you. And also before you even leave, no know if you're going to have that uber or if there's yeah. going to be uber yes. or, yeah. or whatever yeah know what, that's like, know what that number is but know have that already on the card or phone and the reason why you're taking the card from the hotel this is it yeah because there's be that language barrier right yes Call the yeah. hotel, put them on the phone with whoever you're trying to do an uber or a taxi or whatever so that they can talk to them directly and let them know where to bring you to. Yes, yes. So you don't have to with Google Translate or anything yeah. like that. You know, just have that card handy. Oh my God, girl, you just made me remember a trip that I took with a, a girlfriend of mine. I, I wasn't by myself, but I was with one of my girlfriends and we went, we were in uh, just outside of Venice. And yeah. I, you know, I. I will never forget this. We had to go to a wedding outside of Venice and neither one of us wrote down the hotel name. <laughs> so we take the train out to this tiny town outside of Venice and on the way back, it was like the middle of the night by this point, but we were together uh, and our phones died. All the information was on our phones. It was by the grace of God. I'm not even kidding. And our guardian angels that she randomly had a receipt and I was like, please check your purse. You've got to have something. She was digging through her purse. We didn't even know what to tell the taxi driver. Neither one of us even could speak the language to tell the taxi driver, but she finally found a random receipt in her, at the bottom of her purse that had the hotel's name. And I, after that, I was like, never again. So now anytime I go somewhere, I write all that stuff down and I put it in my notes on my iPhone. That's oh my gosh. Yeah. You just said something really key. Your, bat, your phone died. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you for saying it because hello, this is where a battery pack comes in. Oh uh, yeah. You definitely have to have one when you travel. Oh, 100%. If you don't it, you need to get one, it's oh, a I, small investment. Hundred percent. You don't need to get a big one, you know, because it's just to help in cases that just like happened yeah. to me, you know, just to give you enough juice to turn it back on for five, you know, to make a phone call or something yes. like. That. You can get a small one to put in your little clutch bag yes. to have you because you never know and get one of them little small connecting cables because you yeah. never know what's yeah. what connected. Hundred percent. Having that and having a three by five index card, if you're really nerdy about it, I'm just yes. saying. No, I, I listen, the index yeah, card would have been, card. yeah, or, or, or the business card, like you said initially. So you're uh, spot on because in that case, the iPhone wouldn't help me. But you're, mm -hmm. I, and, and by the way, P.S., I don't leave the house now without my battery charge thing because I know I have so much on my phone. So I, I, I'm totally down with that. 
So I want to, I want, cause I know uh, I'm taking up a lot of your time, but you're giving us such good nuggets. So I want to, before we close out, I want to talk really quickly about two things. One is, so what's going on now with COVID and new uh, policies, regulations, social norms that you've seen. Cause I got to tell you, I haven't been on a plane. I mean, I had like a 10 year streak where I was on a plane either every week or every other week at the most or at the least. And I have not been on a plane in over a year and a half. And I still don't feel comfortable to get on a plane, to be honest with you. I've been taking my car everywhere. And so what are some of the new things that you think we're seeing? Do you think it's you, do you think it's pretty safe? Cause I know some of the domestic care and by domestic, I mean, us carriers are not putting it, not filling in the middle seats, but we talked about this in clubhouse the other day. Now they are. And so I'm just not, I just don't know where, the new regulations or policies or social norms stand? So the, the, the airlines, um, as I mentioned when we were in the room the other day, um, you notice that the, the flights didn't stop. You know, there were still planes going from east to west, north to south when the pandemic hit at the height in March, April, May, June, you know. Yeah, the but whole, they slowed down significantly. I mean, significantly. They slowed down, yeah. but they didn't stop. Okay. And there's a reason. So the cruise line completely yanked out the water. Yeah. Completely Girl, stopped. you can't get me, on, you couldn't get me yeah. on a cruise ship before the pandemic. Completely. <laughs> so uh, Uber kind of uh, completely stopped. Lift yeah. stop. Everything yeah. literally All the ride sharing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All that stopped. But what yeah. did not stop was flights. So you ever wonder why that was? Like, why did the flights not stop? Why did they keep on? Going? For some reason, I thought that they w- the uh, the planes were grounded for a bit. But okay, no, they slowed down, but they did not stop. Okay. And what happened with that? In the ground of flights, you're talking about mostly were international when the countries closed and borders and different things like okay. that. Okay. But when we come to like the state to state, you know, going from north, south, east, to west, they were still flying. Okay. The reason why that was is because of their air system. Yeah, so please they- let's talk about this because I I don't understand if anything's changed because you know. No. So the reason why they were able to still fly is because of the air filtration system that they have. They have a system that's like similar to an operating room system where you have air that's going to circulate, but circulate out and come back in and be cleaned and dirty air goes out, clean air comes in. It's like a, a good cycle. So if you got okay. somebody coughing, <clears throat> you got in somebody the back, too- if somebody's if somebody, if, if somebody in the front is coughing and I'm sitting in the back. Am I going to get their air? That's what I'm, that's, no, so that's what I'm saying. So that what, what, what's going to come in, it's not going to stay in the cabin. It's going to go out. Okay. Unlike a cruise, when you sneeze, when you cough and you're on that ship I got for to, minimum yeah. two, days, I, 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 two days. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, you could not get me on a cruise before the pandemic. And I'm nothing against cruises, but I'm just saying like my phobias and, and cruise ships don't, they don't date. And so that's, that's just not happening. So I'm going to give you some tips. And, and so it's very, it's very important that people understand what the system is. Basically clean air in, bad air out. Clean air okay. in, it's constantly circulating. You okay. know? So out out you the that, aircraft and bringing in new air from outside. And just like when you're in the OR, same thing, clean air in, bad air out, clean it because you have an open, you know, you're operating, have it open, can be the same air with people still, you got mask on, but still, no, you want to be safe, right? Yeah. The uh, cruise lines do not have an open air system. It's consistently circulating within that ship, the same air. It's just Yeah, circulating. unless you're outside on the deck. Same yeah. Air. yeah. Unless you're yeah. outside on the so If you notice, like, even before COVID, you can go and, and, and Google this. Please Google it. Google uh, air filtration systems. Okay. And you'll see people got sick. Um, people have sneezes, coughs, colds, and everything coming back from a cruise ship. You know, okay. that, that was common. And that was no, and the reason why is because they've been on a ship. They've been in close quarters. And it's the same air. Unless, like you said, you go out on the Lido deck and you have that great right. air. In the um, in the airplane, the volume of the cabin air is exchanged every 
two to three minutes. Okay. Every two to three minutes. And they use HEPA filters that are similar to those that's used in a hospital that captures that 99.9% .9 of the viruses or whatever that's coming, yeah. you know, that people are letting out. What does that mean, um, the so air volume is exchanged? So when, I, when we were talking about how it goes in, yeah. out, yeah. in, out, the, the yeah. good and the bad, and every two to three minutes. Okay. So when okay. you say, when you sneeze, so you're talking fine, about, okay, it so now back, you're, oh, it's been, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So I have a question. So, really, oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -uh, go ahead. So I, so you, you, you go gave ahead. us some good details on the air filtration and and circulation as well, both. Um, in terms of uh, passenger capacity and mask wearing and and vaccine uh, proof, where where for the, I mean we can't go through all the exhaustive carriers, and I don't think they're all the same, but. What are we seeing with that? So, as far as what mask and oh, right, right. so are, are do we have to wear a mask on a plane? Are the middle seats yeah. being being right. used? Yeah. So, airplane wear mask is still federal law. Wait, say that again because uh, you put in, in the, and out. Uh, one more time. On the plane, you yeah. still have to wear a mask because it's still federally mandated. Okay. You know, by law, that you yeah. have to. Okay. Even if you're vaccinated, okay. you still have to. Uh, okay. And no, there's no middle seats. It's elbows to elbows now. Okay. Um, but you wow. still have to wear your mask on. And they're now passing out uh, drink beverages, alcohol, and you take your mask off. And yeah. And you can take your mask off and you, and you can eat. But what's been happening, you know, and I've been traveling on a plane since September of last year. Wow. And what I noticed is I've been also looking at the CDC cases on a daily basis just to see how it's affecting what. Yeah. I have not come across where people are getting COVID like in big numbers from oh, traveling. So, traveling. so are they, are, are you required to show any kind of like proof of any medication or vaccination or anything like that? No, nope, because it doesn't think, matter. You're going to keep that mask on. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think that's the case for international travel, though. Uh, in many so, yeah, for international travel is different, you know, because COVID requirements, you know, if you want to a country that requires you to have a COVID test, you got to show that. Yeah. Uh, you can't even put on a plane without it. Yeah. But in terms of just, just the normal, hey, what do you have to do when you go to the airport? You have to wear your mask, even if you're vaccinated. And oh, by the way, um, they still give you like, hand sanitizer, um, yeah. little wipes, wipe down your, your seat and everything. Yeah, which um, I did before the pandemic, P.S. I, I did that before the pandemic. Right. <laughs> wipe it down. Just be safe. And and so, yeah. Yes, it, it, has, it, it has helped. So safety on airplanes is, is real good in comparison to... Mm, I would say going into for my for me for example going into Walmart right now because yeah, you go to Walmart you. and you yeah. have people yes but you yeah. don't know if they're you don't know because right. there's no proof to say right. that there are so right I'm like you're on the if you're COVID conscious truly and you're really concerned you're really safe on the plane because of some fact you still at least have to wear your mask and the yeah. good thing is the filtration system is in and out in and out in and out which is absolutely a phenomenal thing and yes they're still planning out sand sanitizers and wipes and stuff as you come on board the plane which is still phenomenal and good at the same time yeah okay so um I'm gonna let you know if I get back on a plane or not. But <laughs> I, so I have one last question before we close out because I know we've taken up a lot of your time, Ms. Janine. I'm grateful. I want to know your favorite trip, uh, and where, and uh, basically, where, where was your favorite trip, and where is a bucket list place that you still want to go? My favorite trip was to Cuba. Okay. Cuba is my favorite. Trip. Um. I don't know if you ever had an experience where you get to a place and you just know that there's home for you and it just okay. resonates. Everything about it just goes. Right, so the food, so, the culture, the people. The culture, the people, everything. You okay. name it. It okay. was phenomenal. Um, and the sucky part about it is just 
the, you know, that it's just not one of the places you just get to go to all the time because it's always drama dealing with yeah. the location. <laughs> but it's one of my best places to go. Okay. And I have a live list. Um, but my live list is kind of like there's just not one destination for me. Okay. So my live list is basically to hit all seven continents, and the final one will be the Antarctica. Oh, so my goodness. Good luck with the cold. With the Antarctica, uh, not just to hang out there, but just yeah. to say, I took the ship, took the voyage, we went through the rock, you know, I got out. I, and then yeah. I got back. <laughs> Back on. You know what I'm <laughs> Let me touch the ground. But I'm back on. You know, that kind of thing. some places genetically, it's just too cold for me. Like, just my genetics are like, no, that's a no, negative gross no, no. I just want to say, hey, I experienced it. Oh, okay. Time to go. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. So I got to share mine. So, my, I think my favorite trip, and it was because it was an impromptu trip, like totally last minute, and I didn't plan it or anything was Valentine's Day of 2019, was it 2019? No, 2020. I treated myself and you know, so many women that are single are just like on Valentine's Day, they get so sad. And I was like, listen, I'm all, this is great. I'm gonna go where I want to go. So I actually at the time was living in you, I see you post about Alona all the time uh, in Saudi. So I was living in Saudi at the time working and Alona, uh, you know, with the rocks and yes. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I booked this like package deal when they had the festival for winter uh, uh, and I went there and I, I booked a, this is so crazy, but I booked a, you know, those wagons uh, back in the wild west when you do a wagon uh -huh. caravan in yeah, yeah, yeah. a circle, yeah. so there was a spot that they had in an Ola which if, if people, folks don't know where it is, it's in Saudi, it's like Northwest in kind of the Medina area, right outside of Medina, which is one of the holy cities. But anyway, um, the, they had this caravan Wild West kind of set up, of, but it was like trailer homes. So the outside was silver, but the interior was redesigned by the sofa till. Yeah. So there was this, uh, yeah. So there was this setup of like this wild west wagon that was like in this crevice of these canyons out in the middle of the day. I mean, it was just, it, it was literally like something out in the Grand Canyon. Um, and it was absolutely beautiful. And there was a whole package that came along with it, like your flight and all this stuff. But the best part of the whole thing was it was Valentine's day. I was by myself. So, and they, they were fully serviced in terms of like having a campfire and all this stuff. But um, I winded up having dinner by myself in this canyon that I literally had to suck in. Like, I don't know how they got the stove back there. I don't know how they got the cook. I don't, I have no idea how they got this stuff back there. I don't know if they're airlifted. I have no idea, but I had to like suck in and like go in sideways to get to my dinner table that basically opened up to this beautiful kind of space, but I had to walk through these two tiny, these two huge rocks and kind of go through this tiny crevice. It was absolutely the most amazing thing. And I just wasn't expecting it and didn't plan it. So that was my favorite, but my bucket list, I know it's crazy. It was absolutely crazy. It was, it was it, and it was a great meal. Uh, and I was by myself and everybody kept staring at me, but I was like, whatever, I'm living my best life. So <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I had a great table and it was just, I mean, it was just so, it was romantic for me, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know I mean? Like I was, I was totally like treating myself to like a romantic Valentine's Day getaway. It was lovely. I loved it. And, and, and it, you're the only one count. And then I just, you know, because you we were talking about, I'll just throw one more out there. Just, yeah. Just for people to think. Um, Morales Igloos to be able to see the northern lights we're talking about okay, where is that where is that so you can go alaska yeah you can go uh greenland okay. and these are igloos where you can they're they're clear yeah and you can literally it's a hotel yeah. you can literally um just really see clearly the northern lights which oh my is god that sounds beautiful, beautiful experience because yeah. one is an ego two yeah. more than like so, yeah, so you sure you stay in an, in an igloo stay in an igloo oh my goodness oh my goodness stay in an igloo and so it, it's an experience 
and you we I spoke on you know traveling the self you know and I said it's from me for medicine and I'm telling people yes. it's travel is not about the destination yeah more so about the journey oh a hundred percent Miss Janae a hundred percent a hundred percent and what you're getting at is talked about you know talking with people at the bar you yeah. know it's who you meet along the way oh a hundred percent you can say it's simply the destination you know and this little jam is in Fairbanks Alaska yeah Alaska is on my list Alaska is on my <laughs> list I really want to go visit Alaska but I got to do something about the cold I don't know. Yeah, look, if, if you can just take a weekend, you know, this is one of the ones I'll say, this is the weekend getaway, you know. Yeah. Um, and the Pacific so, Northwest. The Pacific yeah, Northwest. Yeah, right the with a lot yeah. of people. So, yeah, yeah just a weekend getaway, you know, fly up, you know, be on the West Coast and, and take a flight from there to, to, um, to Alaska. And then, you know, so say you're, say you're in Seattle. Yes. So I've like, always wanted trip. to yeah and do that round trip you know base camp is uh, uh seattle yes take that quick trip for the weekend to alaska and come you know come on back you yeah. your point is to go to fair fairbanks fly yeah. into fairbanks take this adventure look at the northern lights on a friday night oh <laughs> that sounds amazing that sounds you know, so you're amazing. not in the cold cold and you're not miserable if you're not a cold person but you're able to get in get out the have an experience of seeing it and enjoying it yeah that sounds incredible miss janae thank you so much I, have you heard about this app called trulina which mm -hmm. they're not, okay so there you know there's no like sponsorship or anything here but i i just came across them um and it's kind of like match.com but for finding travel buddies <laughs> for women so I'm just throwing that out there because you threw out some really good travel apps and this is one that helps you kind of sync up with a travel buddy if you, you know, don't, or if you're, if you're not up for taking a solo trip and, and it's really, it's uh, targeting women. So it's like women with, with other women. And I'll tell you, thanks for saying that because there are a lot of Facebook groups now. Oh, really? Okay. So that's another resource. Solo. Where you're, yeah, tra you're traveling by yourself, but not, but you've got like a, you can find a travel buddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Solo moms, you know, sister, sister. Okay. You know, okay. Wait, so on Facebook, you've got solo mom, sister, sister. There was an incredible woman. If y'all are on clubhouse, there was a, obviously uh, Miss Janae um, is a great person to follow. Cause you talk about this a lot in clubhouse. Uh, but there was another lady that we met the other day in Clubhouse named Zara, Zara yeah. uh, mm -hmm. who, who also talks about kind of taking solo trips. And then uh, Trulina, which is, I think, T-R-O-U-L-I-N-A for finding like a, another female travel buddy. Um, and there was another lady who talked about how she was able to get, gain access for, a, a, in terms of remote learning for her, for her daughter. Um, so there are, I'm saying that, I don't Girl know world family mm -hmm. okay it's yeah. a program world yes family. okay yeah. so these are there so basically all that to say is that there are there's a plethora especially with the internet and google and clubhouse and just kind of this podcast and everything else there's a plethora of resources out there so where you can travel by yourself but not but just kidding not really <laughs> until you get your until you get your sea legs uh and, and, and are, are ready to swim on your own with that, I'm going to close out this podcast. Miss Janae, I am so grateful to you for your time and your insights and your energy, uh, especially while you're doing this remotely in the midst of kind of your shuffle. I really appreciate it. One more time, give us the name of your travel agency and your social media platforms, if you don't mind. So on all my social media platforms, the name of my travel agency is Ultimate Sky. That's S-K-Y-E, Travel. You type that in Facebook, I'll pop up. Okay. Instagram, I'll pop up. LinkedIn, <laughs> same thing. Um, or you type in the Travel Vet, that's D A Travel V E T. Yes. I'll pop up. I'm all social media platforms now, with the exception of Pinterest. So that's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook Clubhouse, and TikTok. Okay, I'm going to tag you. Cause I don't think I've tagged you. So I'm going to tag you <laughs> except on Instagram, but I'm going to tag you on this other stuff where we overlap. Uh, with that, Miss Janae, I'm going to say thank you so much for your time and your energy and your insights. 
uh, and for your authenticity more than anything for, and for just being real and just sharing a piece of yourself with us. I'm really grateful. Uh, and with that, I'm going to close out Authentic Feeds June podcast on Life Lesson 94, taking a solo trip. Uh, and basically flying solo, not being afraid to do it and feeling empowered to do so. From 140 Life Lessons I Wish I Knew at 20, aka a FSB 140, which is out now, y'all. You're welcome to it. I'm so super excited. And with that, that's a wrap, folks. I always act like there's a whole bunch of people here, but it's just me. That's a wrap. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Thanks, Miss Janae. I'm going to stop. <laughs>